seconds early, so you have to pardon me. Um, I wanted to go over, I wanted to drop in just like a minute early just to kind of go over a couple things real quick before we dive into this subject, which is going to be super interesting. Um, mods, um, just like always, if any trolls happen to pop into the chat, um, ban first, delete later. So just click on their name, go to hide user from channel, and then after that we can delete whatever dumb comment came up. Um, also, I wanted to point out before we dive into this that we finally have the paperwork done to in order to sell products. And Emily is in Minneapolis this week. In fact, it's her birthday today. Um, if you go to Emily MMC, if you search that in YouTube, you'll find her crafting channel. Um, if you could give her a quick happy birthday, that would be awesome. Um, she is 71 years old today. But anyway, um, when she gets back from her trip, uh, she is going to uh, get the website set up and then we're going to start selling products like immediately. I'll let you all know when that when that happens. Uh, all right, it is one o'clock. Uh, hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name, my name is, uh, what, what do we do today? The Punchback of Notre Dame. I'm the Punchback of Notre Dame today. And we're going to be talking about the cost of hoarding. Um, we're going to talk about the obvious cost of hoarding, how they can afford it, which is a huge question I get a lot. Um, and we're going to talk about my favorite subject, which is the unseen cost of hoarding. And you're going to see me looking off camera a lot because this is such a complex subject that I had to do an outline uh, in order to keep all the, uh, the, the facts straight and to get all of my points out without skipping over stuff. Um, I, I wanted to start out by saying, like, I, I think a lot of people have a misconception about how hoarding happens. I think that they believe the timeline of how quick this material builds up is shorter than it actually is. So I'd rather you think of hoarding like if we were to give a hoarder a blank slate house and clean everything from front to finish. It's typically not going to be completely hoarded again with them within a month. It's going to take to get to the to the stage of the hoarders that I deal with on video that typically takes years. And so you can think about it like when the leaves start to fall off of trees in the fall and your yard is a blank slate, it's been mowed all summer, and then leaves start to fall and you get a little bit at a time and you're like, eh, I'm not gonna bother raking that up, it's just a few leaves. But then they kick into high gear and they start falling faster and faster and then your yard starts to get really covered with leaves and you're like, okay, I, I don't have the energy to go out there and do that, I'm not messing with it right now, leaves are just gonna keep falling anyway. And so, you just let them go. And then by the time all the leaves are done falling from the tree, um, your entire yard is just completely covered. And then you have to either hire somebody to do it or you have to do backbreaking work to get it all cleaned up before next spring or whatever. At least that happens with me. Thank you, Jesse. Um, for those who don't know, uh, whenever I'm doing a subject like this, I typically don't read chat until we're all done with the subject and then I open it up for just BSing and hanging out and, and answering questions and things like that. So if you end up hitting me with a tip or whatever and I don't mention it, it's not because I'm being rude, it's probably because I didn't see it. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> now we got that really terrible analogy out of the way about the leaves. In order to understand the unseen costs of hoarding, you need to understand the seen costs of hoarding and how it happens. My cat just entered the room uninvited. So some buy out of a sense of preparedness, like whenever you grow up poor and you find yourself running out of food as a kid that sticks in your brain and eventually get to the point where as an adult, you overbuy in order to compensate for that because you never wanna go through that stuff again. Um, but more often I see people buying in order to alleviate stress. So you need to understand that, <clears throat> excuse me, 
hoarding disorder happens out of a response to incredible trauma, deaths in the family, really bad divorces, loss of a career, um, the death of a child. You know, it's really bad things that build up and then it triggers hoarding disorder, which is a neuropsychological disorder. What happens is you have that PTSD setting in your head and you have that trauma festering and it, it brings you into like an anxiety ridden hellscape and you're dealing with massive depression and you notice over time subconsciously <clears throat> that when you go out shopping and you buy something that's fun or that catches your eye or something that you like to collect, it's like opening a Christmas present. You get a little jolt of dopamine and you get a little joy out of it. And for the, for a temporary state, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, my voice is raspy today, but yet you, you get to alleviate that stress and that depression. And it's fun. So you bring home the thing, you set it on the counter. And so for instance, maybe you're like, hey, it's Halloween. I'm at Dollar General. I'm going to go ahead and get... Um, you know, Halloween candy for the kids and I'm going to get little trick or treat bags and costumes for my grandkids or whatever. And you bring them home and you set them on a kitchen counter. And by the time Halloween comes, you've also gone shopping for groceries and you come home and you set those on the counter along with all the Halloween stuff. And then you find some things you need like light bulbs and you set that um, down with it and by the time Halloween comes, that stuff is buried in rubble and just all the extra stuff that you bought. So when you finally clean up the house like three years later, which is a lot of the cases of hoarding disorder, they go years without being cleaned. You start going through the pile and you're like, oh my God, here's Halloween candy from like three years ago. And <clears throat> it, <clears throat> it happens a lot. Um, but for that temporary time that that little window that in which they were buying it alleviated stress so they continue to do it um sorry i lost my place in my notes so okay so that leads into the idea that there are certain things that each hoarder gets attached to um so they they gravitate toward buying that type of stuff so in the last house that I just did, they bought a lot of clothing and a ton of candy. I gravitate toward buying shoes. Now I'm nowhere near a hoarder in shoe buying. I've got maybe eight pairs of shoes. If I allowed myself, I would have a room dedicated to shoes for real. I would have hundreds. Um, but fortunately I don't have hoarding disorder. So I have a mechanism in my brain that stops me from doing that. Um, there's like a logic involved that is different from the logic that hoarding disorder victims have. So um, if a person grew up without shoes like me, we, we had shoes that would get so old they would split at the seams and the soles would come off, but we were too poor to buy new ones. I had shoes that were wrapped in duct tape <clears throat> and it was embarrassing as a, as a teenager growing up with duct tape shoes, and we had this product called Shoe Goo that we would fix our shoes with, which was basically silicone. When I got older and I started making enough money to do it, I gravitated towards shoes because it made me feel good every time I bought them. It was like it was a luxury and it, it gave me a dopamine hit. It still does. Um, I'll go out and have to force myself to not buy shoes because if I allowed myself, I would go into a store and walk out with five pair. Or, or more, but that's a response to the way that I grew up. Um, and it's knowing that it's a bit strange to see the same items being hoarded in each house that I do over and over. So for instance, shoes is a thing in hoarder houses, but um, they take it to the hoarding extreme where I'll find 50 pairs of shoes, sometimes more. Uh, in a house. And if you're talking about, let's say somebody gets an average cheap pair of shoes from Walmart for 40 bucks, some, something from Kohl's, it's not even Nike. It's, it's, you know, Adidas or even knockoff brands, those ones with the N on the sides of it. 
and say they're pay, buying a cheap pair of on sale shoes for $40. If you have 50 pairs of those, you're sitting with $2,000 worth of shoes. And obviously you're not going to wear 50 pairs of shoes and most of those shoes are never going to be worn. Um, the last house that I was in had around a hundred pairs of women's jeans. So let's say she got all those at Walmart on sale. The cheapest of the cheap outside of garage sales would be $20 a pair. That means she's setting with $2,000 worth of just jeans. And again, that's on top. That's a, uh, $2,000 worth of the cheapest jeans that still have tags on them. Most of those were not Walmart knockoffs. You get them at Kohl's for $40 a pair, in which case, if all those are averaging $40 a pair, you're talking about $4,000 worth of just jeans. Um, in a lot of houses, I see an overabundance of purses and bags, like 50 to 80 purses and bags. Um, I don't know the cost of those, and I'm not going to pretend that I do, but if any of you have ever bought purses and bags, multiply that price by 50 to 80, and that's how much is sitting in a lot of the houses that I do. And one of the most interesting things that I find hoarded a lot is medication and vitamins. So there's a genuine worry on the end of the hoarder that health is an issue. They find themselves coughing a lot and having sinus problems and breathing problems. So you see a ton of resp or, uh, uh, inhalers. You see a ton of vitamins, lots and lots and lots of vitamins because they get sick so often, they're like, I must just have a disease. Um, so I need to get a bunch of vitamins to help fight that. The irony is that in a lot of cases, um, not all, but in a lot of cases, the reason they're sick is because of their environment. You've got black mold in the house, ammonia from unchanged kitty litter, dogs that go on the floor, pet hair and pet dander, uh, extreme dust, fungal blooms um, from rot and trash and rotten old food, mouse and rat waste. And all this stuff is in the air and it circulates through the house, through the intake of the house and blows out the vents and it's constantly being stirred. And so the irony is that by putting them in, and again, this is not all of them. This is, this is some, if you were to give them a clean slate house, that's clear of all those things, they would find their health immediately getting better because they're not inhaling all that stuff. Food is another issue. That's a, a huge expense in a hoarder house. If you were to clear out my entire house of all food, I can for $500, and I'm not making this up, this is, this is, we've done this before. For $500, I can fill my deep freeze, my pantry, my fridge, and my freezer entirely full of food. The only reason I'm saying that is because in almost all hoarder houses, they have roughly 10 times the amount of food that we have. So you're talking about $5,000 just in food. And again, they don't go out and spend five grand on food all at once. No one does that. What they do is they don't get rid of the old stuff. They get rid of, or they buy new stuff and they compound it and they pile it up. And you end up with boxes of food on top of the fridge and on the floor and on the countertops and pantries that are so crowded that you can't find the expired food because it's packed in with all the other stuff. Uh, I mentioned in a video um, that we did a couple videos ago that nobody puts the expired food in front and then puts better food behind. And what I meant by that is normal houses do do that. They put the new food in the back. They put the stuff that's older in the front so that they can eat that stuff before it goes bad. Hoarders don't do that. They pile stuff in. So the further back you go on account in a cabinet, the older the food gets. Um, the other thing they collect a lot is dishes and Tupperware. And there's this sort of mentality of if a thing is not technically disposal or disposable, they feel like they can't dispose of the old stuff. So you get massive amounts of Tupperware that they will never use in their entire life. You get 
on top of that, them saving like old butter bowls, butter tubs, like Cool Whip containers. And because they can never have enough of them, they see the potential use in those items. So they continue collecting them. Jars of like pickles, they'll dump it out, wash it out, keep the jar, never use it. So it ends up taking up real estate within your house. So all that is to say, like these expensive build, these ex expenses build up to where they've got tens of thousands of dollars of stuff that they're not using, and how can they afford it? It's like the number one question I get: How can they afford all this stuff? Well, there's two answers to that in my mind. One is that in most cases they can't. <clears throat> they buy things over time. They go to Walmart clearance racks. They go to uh, buying things in bulk in order to save money. They uh, go to garage sales. They pick up things for free off the curb. And then they do it little bits at a time. And then over the years, those things add up to thousands of dollars worth of extra stuff laying around. Most of them are living in poverty, living check to check, and most can't even live check to check. Um, and they don't understand why they're poor. And it's be, a lot of the times, I mean, there's a lot of circumstances beyond hoarding that makes them live in poverty, but they're exacerbating that problem by continuing to buy the Walmart clearance stuff to save money. <clears throat> the other type of hoarder is the ones who can afford it. And that one is just as dangerous because there's no repercussions for losing money on spending items. So their loss is in the value of the space within their house on top of the loss of food going bad, which we'll get to here in just a minute. So yeah, the, the answer to that question, how can they afford it? In most cases, they can't. It's just a, a built up over time thing. I mean, if I spend a dollar a day on whatever random stuff, like let's say a dollar a day on gum, by the end of the year, I've spent $365 on gum. But if I tell you, hey, I, I just spent $365 on gum, you would think I was insane. It only, it only starts to make sense whenever you see the full timeline of how they're doing this. Um, so that brings me to my favorite part of this, which is the unseen cost of hoarding. So one of the, the more obvious of that is that the food that they buy goes bad. Um, that $5,000 figure that I gave you earlier is the same whether it's a full family or a single person household. There's the same amount of food in both. And what happens is they, they get so much food, they could never ever eat it. And they lose food in the pantry because there's so much stuff piled on top of other food that you get food that's buried underneath it all. So it may have gone bad five, 10 years ago and they don't know because they can't unpile all the food to get to the stuff that was going bad. There's just too much of it. So in a lot of places um, or a lot of instances, it's like walking into a store, handing the cashier 500 bucks and then just walking away with nothing. You've just thrown that away and you've done it out of a sense of saving money by buying too much stuff. You think, well, if I buy all this in bulk, the green beans that I just bought instead of a dollar a can or 50 cents a can, because there's a sale that you can buy 10 of them for, you know, five bucks or whatever, but you never get to them. So they eventually go bad and you've just thrown that money away. Um, it, it's the same, by the way, with crafting supplies, which is another thing we get a lot of in hoarder houses is they see the potential in those objects and especially in crafting. So they'll go into Hobby Lobby and drop a hundred bucks on crafting supplies and then just come home and throw it on the pile and it never gets used because they don't have room to do the crafting. The crafting supplies get lost within the pile so they forget that they're even there. So not only is that one like handing somebody at Hobby Lobby a hundred dollar bill and then walking away with nothing, it's also the same as giving them a cubic foot of your house because you now have all this crafting supplies taking up space for no reason. So it's like, here's a hundred bucks and here's a cubic foot of the space in my house that I can no longer use because it's got all this crap on it. Um, 
they have no place to store the clothing that they just bought. And that's really evident in the last house that I did. It's actually more evident in some of the earlier houses I did before that, because what happens is you run out of dresser space, you run out of closet space. So you start making a pile on the floor. And in most cases that invites mice and rats into your house, bugs, bed bugs, roaches, because it gives them shelter to live under. So not only do the mice get under the clothes to hide and to build nests, they also chew up the clothing that is on top of them in order to make those nests and ruin it. Then they poop and pee on the other clothes, which makes them unusable. So almost all clothing that I find in a hoarder's house is saturated in mouse urine and mouse poop. Um, and it just ruins the clothes. So, so the five grand that you bought in clothes half of that is now unusable because it's been ruined by infestations. Um, along with that, you get duplicates of items because they, the hoarder can't find the ones that they've already bought. So I've worked in houses that have had 15 iPads buried under trash. Um, they've had 10 phones. They set the phone down, they go do whatever. Over time, the phone loses charge, so you can't call it to find out where it's at and now it's just lost in the rubble. So they end up having to get a new phone and reset everything up, and then it, they continue that process over and over. Um, the last house that I had had that problem with uh, mixing bowls and measuring cups. There were a dozen full sets of mixing bowls that still had the tags on that have never been opened and never been used because they would buy it it would get lost in the mess. And then they would be like, I can't find it, so I'll buy more. You know, a month later, they can't find the ones they already had. So they buy new ones and it just keeps building and building and building and they continue this cycle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so the, the, there's a cost that happens on buying duplicate items. And in every single hoarder house that I clean, I will always find duplicates of expensive items that just compound the price that they're paying for their stuff. Uh, there's an increase in illness due to mice, um, bug waste, mold, flies, um, which means more doctor visits, which means them buying more medication to add to the pile of meds they've already got more vitamins because they're sick more often. Um, and then you, it, it, that cost by itself can be in the thousands of dollars over the years because they can never get the house cleaned into an order where the illnesses that are caused by those disease carrying pests um, can't get to them anymore. So, um, So that leads to uh, one of my favorite ones, which is damage to the home. Um, I've worked in places where there's so much stuff on the floor that it damages not only the floor, but the foundation um, that, that cracks the foundation. I'm currently dealing with a crack in my foundation. It's going to cost us $31,000 to fix the house. Most people, especially hoarders, don't have that. So they end up with a house that becomes condemned. Um, you, they get a buildup of mold in the walls and, you know, right out on the floor underneath piles of stuff. They get water damage because the plumbing is almost always broken. The repair people can't get to the things they need to repair because of the stuff. And so the, the problem that they have with water leaks just gets worse and worse until it rots out the subfloor. I worked in one that had so much clothing in a bedroom, the floor had caved in, even without water damage, just the weight made the floor cave in. Um, most of their sinks and toilets and hoarder houses are clogged and inoperable. And the irony is that the fixes for those things are $10 or less. Like they need a new P trap or an S trap or whatever. They need a, a new um, little piece of PVC to replace old one that had split or has a bad seal. They need a valve stem on their uh, water handles. And those things are like 10 bucks. It takes five minutes to change them. 
but they can't ever get it because either the repair people can't get to them or um, they're too embarrassed to even bring repair people into the house to begin with. And there are a lot of places that if they walk into a hoarder house and just get hit with that smell, they'll automatically leave. Like their bosses will tell them, I'm not subjecting you to that. You're not going into that place. It's dangerous. They're going to have to fix it themselves. Um, so you get those problems that exacerbate. And the one that I did that was the, the wealthy people's house, the really, really nice house. When I cleaned out that basement, they had a bucket sitting underneath the, the spout on their water heater that was overflowing with water. The bucket was. They had they couldn't get to that water heater for years, at least three years. And so that water heater has been steadily leaking for three years solid and leaking down into a drain. The bucket no longer has any use because the water hits it and then overflows the bucket. And then the bucket flows water into the, uh, the drainage. <clears throat> I made it to where the, a repairman can at least get to the, uh, the water heater now, but I mean, three years with, with leaking water is a massive amount on their bills. Uh, friends and family can't visit you. That's a weird hidden expense because you won't let them into the house. So you have to spend money visiting them, either gas money, travel money, plane, train, automobile money. Um, that's a weird hidden cost because most hoarders won't allow friends and family into their house. And then the most expensive thing <clears throat> is the cost to clean it up once you had no choice but to clean it up. So maybe the city steps in and says, we're going to condemn your house and kick you out of here if, if you don't get this clean. Friends and family are like, we're going to have you committed if in, declared incompetent that you're going to have to go into a nursing home if you can't get it clean. Once houses reach the condition of the ones you've seen me clean that are really, really high level hordes, if I were charging them for it, I wouldn't do it for less than 10 grand. Um, there's at least one, if not two houses, I wouldn't have touched for under $20,000. And if you get somebody who's got a full cleanup crew with dumpsters and all that, and you've got five or 10 people working in a house, it can be more expensive than that. Once you're done, you're uncovering the biohazard. You're uncovering all the damage in their house. And now they've got to repair subfloors. They've got to get mold removal. They have to get all their appliances replaced because they haven't worked in years. After the cleanup, the ten dollars to $20,000 just cleanup, in order to rebuild the kitchen, you're going to be spending another $30,000, which is the national average in the U.S. for a mid-range, mid-sized kitchen. Um, in the process of condemning a house, if it goes that far, they're going to lose 80 to 100% of everything they own because um, it's all broken or biohazard or covered in mold or covered in water damage. So ironically, the things that they spent all their money on is, are going straight into a dumpster without their, without their permission. They, they've hit rock bottom. They can't keep it. <clears throat> Once you're done with all this, now you're getting into infestation costs to get rid of roaches, mice, rats, bed bugs, which is a big one. We had a bed bug scare once. Not We didn't even have bed bugs. We had a scare of possibly having bed bugs <clears throat> to protect our house. Cost 2,600 bucks through Orkin. That was to get all the bed wrap, beds wrapped and to get it sprayed and to make sure that everything was protected against bed bugs, $2,600. Um, in extreme circumstances, you could be talking about 10 grand just for infestation removal for not just bed bugs, but all the other roaches and stuff that go with it. Then in an extreme example, um, if the city steps in and condemns the house and makes and has to remove them, you're talking about money for fines, litigation costs, eviction costs, lawsuits for home repairs from a landlord. And by the time you're done, the unseen cost by itself to get everything livable and to get the person back into a normal state of living can cost a hundred grand easily. If they are committed and they are declared incompetent, 
Um, now you're talking about the cost of a, mer a nursing home per month, which is basically your entire life savings. Um, it's you're giving all your money to the nursing home in order for them to take care of you. It's extremely expensive to house somebody through a nursing home. If the hoarder passes, <clears throat> all of that expense goes on to your kids, all of it. You, the only way it doesn't go on to your kids is if the kids board up the house and forget that it exists like a time bolt. But the kids are now paying for the dumpsters, the repair of the house, the infestation removal, the disposal of all your junk, all your rotten food. Um, and that can be $10,000, $50,000, $80,000 to get a home cleared and repaired in order to sell, in order to hopefully even just break even from what they're, they're spending. So they're not getting an, get, they're not getting an inheritance they're getting a money pit. They're getting a debt when hoarders pass. So instead of them saying you've inherited a house, what you've inherited is $80,000 worth of expenses in order to even do anything with the house. And then you're adding time to do that stuff on top of the expenses to clear it up. And that time in many cases can be as valuable or more valuable than the actual money that you're shoving into that house. It's terrifying. Um, my wife, I believe, could be a compulsive spender easily if I wasn't here to put the brakes on. Because typically you've got one person who spends and buys and one person who puts on the brakes. And when this person who puts on the brakes doesn't want the conflict anymore, this person takes over and fills the house. And so um, I believe that whenever I pass I'm going to have to have something set up in a trust for her, or I'm going to have to have somebody who I can have checking on her to make sure that she's not filling the house with stuff and becoming a hoarder. I could absolutely see that happen. So those are a lot of the hidden expenses with hoarding, which I find extremely interesting because even after explaining that, people are still like how like even then how can they afford it and i i can't stress it enough they can't it's a part of their problem the the poverty and the stress of being poor exacerbates the um the trauma and the anxiety which then makes you buy more stuff in order to get that dopamine rush to make you feel normal again to feel to to alleviate the stress without getting therapy and a, a lot of times uh, anti-anxiety medication and, um, and getting treatment for depression, it's a cycle that feeds itself and they will never ever get out of it. You can't do it on your own. The people who've done it on their own are extreme rarities, like hitting the lottery rarities. Um, it's why I stress therapy so much because it's, it's if your brain is a tool and that tool is broken in some way, you can't fix this broken tool by using the broken tool. You need an outside source, something that's not broken to help fix what's wrong up here. Um, it's why <clears throat> it's so terrifying and it's why I typically just ban people who come in blaming them for their problems because it means they're still thinking like children. They don't see the mental illness and they think of this as a choice. And it's not a choice any more than, you know, depressed people don't choose to be depressed. I didn't choose to break my collarbone when I was younger. I, I had to get it healed, you know. It's, it's a mental illness like any other and blaming somebody for that mental illness is idiotic. Yeah, I'm going to put my glasses on because we that strangely took the half hour I wanted it to take. <laughs> so, yay me. <clears throat> I've also got you guys on a really shaky camera, so I apologize for the shakiness that's about to happen. In fact, I want to put you guys on this. Get off. Hey, you guys are back on your normal spot. 
point you at my computer. <clears throat> You'll have to pardon me. It's um, we're in harvest season right now, and the they're harvesting a bunch of corn. So there's a ton of dust in the air, and a lot of uh, <clears throat> corn particles. I mean, it doesn't help that I vape. So I, but it's um, yeah, it's harvest season. There's the the, the air is almost like. 90% dirt. <laughs> Clark can't. <laughs> do I have yearly Halloween traditions? Yes, I like to sit on my couch and do nothing. I am not a holiday guy. I like Christmas uh, because I just like buying people gifts. That's my weak spot. I love buying people things they'd never expect. And then, um, I like Thanksgiving because I like to cook. I'm a, I'm a very good cook. Um, and I make one of the best turkeys you'd ever have. I've never had a dry turkey. Um, other than that, I'm not a, I'm a birthday guy because I was cheated out of many birthdays by, uh, some very scumbaggy members of my family. And I had even had you know, birthday money stolen by my parents when I was younger. And so birthdays mean a lot to me. And it kind of sucks that Emily's in Minneapolis because I typically like to take her out to, we have like a five-star restaurant that's like a Michelin star type restaurant that I like to take her to. Um, my birthday is I want to be left alone. That's my gift. I turn off my phone or tell everybody I know I don't exist. I sit down and I play video games and everybody else does my chores. That's all I want for my birthday. But I'm not a big holiday guy out, outside of that. So on Halloween, Emily likes to dress up and, and all that. I typically just kind of sit down, relax, and play some games. Midwest Cooking Channel, if I've got the time, I can do it. Right now, time is an issue. Um, so I can't... I want to make a cooking channel because I've got a lot of stuff that I, I know a ton of stuff to cook. And I'm very big on making bread and cinnamon rolls and things from scratch, just starting from flour. <clears throat> so at some point, maybe. What do I do to my turkey? So I season it like normal. I season the living crap out of it. But I stuff it, the entire cavity of the bird, with butter. And then I cover that with aluminum foil and poke holes in it. And then I cook it on 350 for um, the appropriate amount of time. I get it up to 160 degrees and then take it off the heat and it will rise naturally to 165. It'll gain five degrees while it's sitting and resting. Um, in the last, I'd say, 30 minutes to 40 minutes of cooking, I take the aluminum foil off so the outside has time enough to brown. Whenever you're cutting that, so all the butter ends up going to the bottom, right? So when you're cutting it, you can cut the turkey and pull the uh, piece through the butter drippings on the bottom and stack that up. It's really good. Hey, thank you for the $2. I just saw that fly by very quickly. That's, oh, bloody porcelain. I love that uh, disgusting name. <laughs> Yeah, I, I almost bought a turkey, Beth. Um, she said, you're all making me hungry for turkey. And I almost bought one yesterday. But if I did that without Emily here, she would be so pissed. Have I seen Colleen Cleans? I have. Um, yeah, she's pretty cool. I got him. Uh, what is my favorite game right now? Baldur's Gate 3. Thank you, Mary. Um, I've been playing it uh, slow and steady because I like, I don't know, I, I, like, um, I like games that I can walk away from in the middle of. I like turn-based games. So if I like being able to do a game that I can stop, think about, strategize, and then I can go pee in the middle of it and don't have to worry about dying. <laughs> so... Get it done with Gabby's moving to the Midwest. That's cool. I'll have to contact her. I talk to her occasionally. I mean, Gabby was, 
she's basically in the Midwest anyway, but I didn't know she was moving. Yeah, so the other thing is, hey, just, uh, just, just, just. Um, two things for people who weren't here in the beginning. Uh, one, my back is wrecked. Um, I'm having trouble walking. I have to get some rest. The last house that I did, I folded clothes for seven solid hours. And a day and a half later, my back seized up and I'm in a considerable amount of pain today. I'm hoping it goes away quick because I, I don't want to skip a video this weekend. But two, for those who didn't hear earlier, we finally did get the tax paperwork done for our business, which means that I will be able to start selling all the stuff that I use on my videos. And we're going to start that out with micro, our ultra-fine microfiber and microfiber cloths. That'll be coming within the next couple of weeks because we still have to build out the website, which I'm going to work on a little today. Then Emily's going to finish when she gets home. We're also going to come up with about 10 new t-shirt designs, but my the biggest thing is being able to sell the stuff that I use in my video. So I um, instead of just pawning off those sales onto some random, you know, uh, Amazon account, like you can actually get it from us, and that will be a, an incredible way to help support the business and the channel. I don't have an Amazon shop, but that's what I'm talking about right now. I'm we're, we're building our own thing outside of Amazon. I may end up hooking it into an Amazon account to make it a little easier. Now, I don't watch Blessing Boys because I hate their name. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, uh, what's the name? Is it misphonia or something like that? It's when you have a bad reaction to certain sounds or certain words. The word blessing drives me crazy. I don't know what it is. It's it, I hate that word so much and it's um has nothing to do with the actual meaning of the word. It's just the sound of the word. How's Daniel doing? He's doing good. He's doing some homestead type work today. Um they all had the day off. So um they all, Daniel, uh, Jason, and Adrian all had the day off, so they're just kind of hanging out and uh, chilling. Favorite Baldur's Gate 3 companion? Probably, what's his name? I never know how to pronounce names, Astarian or whatever, the vampire dude. Not, I actually hate the dude's personality, and I hate his voice, and I hate the way he looks, but I've got a build for him that basically turns him into a machine gun with uh, with arrows. So that's the reason I like him. I just like his battle. I haven't seen Peeling Away the Clutter. I will check them out though. When am I knocking down the garage that we cleaned out? Hopefully, I don't think it's gonna need knocked down. I think it needs a new roof and I'm going to at some point insulate it um, drywall it and then put up a new garage door and it'll be as good as new. The structure, the structure on that garage is actually really good. Uh, new building, uh, Patty asked new building. If once we get, once I see what the sales are going to be like on the, the sales part of the business, if it can support a new building, I'm going to get a new building and turn that into not just the retail side of things, but also the YouTube studio and the meeting grounds for all the housekeepers. And we're going to take the next step in, in business. Yeah. A lot of people are watching. That's typically what I end up getting is about 1300 people. Hello, 1300 people. <laughs> Sorry. I did not mean to spit on you. I didn't. That's just a reaction. When I see 1,297, I, I automatically have to spit. It's something to do. It's probably an OCD thing. Sneak vape. Yeah, the sound of chewing will make me leave uh, a room. The sound of children whining will make me leave a restaurant. What do I use to clean butcher block counters? Traditionally, traditionally, you'll use either lemon or lime, cut it in half, pour salt on the lemon, and then 
scrub it with that. The acid from the lemon combined with the salt will kill bacteria, fungus, uh, germs and stuff. Um, and it, it smells better too, but you don't ever want to use a, um, uh, an actual cleaner on butcher's block. Sophia, thank you. I want to say thanks. Your channel motivates me to beat my hoard in the face and be successful at keeping it back and also understand my hoarding parents and myself. Thank you. That's the biggest thing I want people to take away from this channel is the education part of it and also my incredibly stupid jokes. <laughs> the like if you're not a devil worshiper. <laughs> I ought to start a secondary channel just for devil worshipers. Why sneak when I vape? Just, I don't know, most of the time it's out of respect. Like, I, I developed the habit off of TikTok because you can't vape on camera on TikTok. They'll actually um, flag you if you're vaping on camera. So I just started doing it there. It became a thing, like a, just a dumb thing where I say sneak vape in that terrible, stupid voice. And I just carried it over to YouTube. How do I get yellowing out from, ba um, damn, that went up quick out from bathroom surround walls. <clears throat> so I assume you've already tried bleach. Chris, thank you. Um, try a magic eraser. And then the, if that doesn't work, try barkeeper's friend. If that doesn't work, try hydrogen peroxide. But in a lot of cases, I just use toilet cleaner with bleach. And that typically just takes out a lot of yellowing. How do I stop mold on the ceiling of the bathroom? That's difficult because if it's popcorn, you're kind of screwed. If it's not popcorn, get um, spray it down with vinegar, cleaning vinegar, or hydrogen peroxide will do the same thing, just not quite as powerful, and use a scouring side of a scouring sponge. Your channel helps me with my daughter's autism, so thank you so much. Well, that's awesome. I hate my popcorn ceilings. Yeah, I, I hate them too. They're, they're impossible to clean, and you can't even take like a Swiffer to them because it catches on the popcorn stuff, and it's just, uh How do you get blood out of robes asking for a friend? I don't know. I've never really had to remove blood from clothing. I've heard OxyClean works um, wonders, but I, I really don't know. Yeah, the TikTok rules about vaping are weird. In fact, the rules about just about anything are weird. I made a self-depreciating joke about my stupid jokes. They flagged the word stupid and censored um, the actual comment. Because they just assume you're calling the person stupid. Man, those are going up quick. Mac, I did the bar keeper's friend and toilet bowl cleaner on my older tub. And the result was amazing. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how quick and easy it works. Like a lot of people are like, you can just skip a step and use Comet with bleach. It's like, no, like I literally own a cleaning business. I, I, I've tried it. <laughs> so I'm not just making things up. Like I've, I've used them in my actual business. So if I'm showing you something, sure, you can modify it. Sure, it may work. But what I'm showing you is the easiest method for doing this stuff. Because I'm not going to do anything that's going to take more effort. That would be dumb. I, like I'm not going to tell my, my employees to say, no, 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 look. You, you did it with this one chemical, but it just looks better on you if you use two. It looks like you're working harder. Where's Emily? She is in Minneapolis. That's where her family lives. She's up visiting her mom and her dad and her brothers, and she took Dakota with her because Dakota doesn't have long to live, uh, maybe a few months. Um, and she wanted her to see one more snow before she passed, so she took her up there in hopes that they get at least one good snow. Um, so... Hopefully between now and next Thursday it does because that's how long she's going to be gone. Ever tried an inversion table for my back? No, um, I, I know what they are. Uh, what I have could possibly be exacerbated by stretching. I have actual physical damage in my back. Sneak vape.
Linda says, do you ever get physically sick when cleaning out a hoarder house? Not yet. I have a weird thing. I only get grossed out by a couple things. Spit, snot. Ugh. Just even thinking about it is just disgusting. And so I can handle poop all day long and mold and I can handle, um, uh, oh, damn it, rot. And I, I can just handle all kinds of stuff. I can handle the smells. And um, even if I couldn't, the respirator kills the smells entirely. And so if it's really bad, I'll wear the full, like, clean with Barbie type respirator. But typically, no, I don't get grossed out from houses that often. Sounds like Darth Vader when I vape. Mac mentioned the Barkeepers is an acid cleaner. You wouldn't want to mix with a base um, toilet cleaner. Uh, a lot of ammonia in the formula. Right, and you don't want to mix that with bleach either. I wouldn't mix Barkeepers Friend with anything. What I do is I use Barkeepers Friend first and then thoroughly rinse that down out. And then on top of that, after I've rinsed it, I'll take a dry cloth and wipe the entire surface to make sure there's no residue left. Then I'll switch to another chemical. But you don't want to be mixing bleach with anything, really. Um, and you really don't want to be mixing acid with anything on the off chance that it can have a, a reaction. I mean, it, it's oxalic acid. It, the stuff I mentioned in older videos about how you could remove black stains from a... a uh, Hardwood floor, oxalic acid is typically what they use, that or muriatic acid. What's the strangest thing I've ever heard a hoarder say? Hmm. Well, the most, I, I wouldn't even call it strange. I hear, hear a lot of them trying to excuse their hoard as if it was out of their control. Um. And as you clean it up, it's it's obvious, like I've done enough of them to where I want to see how it's caused. So I'm going to know it's not just because you got an inheritance and it was too much to keep because I've also picked up a hundred gallons worth of candy. Like it's, I get that a lot. I've, I've had hoarders blame it on their kids, but 100% of the hoard is their personal clothing. Um, and so the blame sometimes frustrates me. It, it because I understand why they're doing it. They're, they're embarrassed. They don't want me to think that they're scumbags, but what they don't understand is I don't think of them that way anyway. And so it's, it's just a little bizarre to have to figure out what happened. And then once you get deep enough into the horde, then they kind of get, um, they get more loose and they, they start talking about what actually caused it. Um, but yeah, as far as strange things that hoarders have said, I, there's, there's not a lot of strange things I get. They, they often want to kind of treat you as a therapist and they'll go off on their politics. And some of them are deeply, deeply, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, conspiracy theorists, like, and they don't just believe a conspiracy theory. They believe them all like they get addicted to conspiracy theories. And so I get a lot of that. And all I do is just kind of nod along and continue cleaning because I'm not going to get into a conversation about, you know, the, the government's trying to kill everyone and all. It's just, yeah, the paranoid. Yeah, I, there's a lot of paranoia in um, in hoarding. What's wrong with Dakota? She has myelopathy. Um, the, her spinal cord on her back half is deteriorating. Um, she's losing feeling and use in her back legs, and eventually it will get to the point to where she's immobile. Um, and we will have to put her down at that point. There's no preventing it. There's no fixing it. There is a medication that can hold it off a bit, which we're going to put her on. And at best, it would give her maybe a year or two. Um, but it, likely, it's not going to do much because hers is progressed. Did I switch from cigarettes to vape? I did. I've been without a cigarette for a few years now, actually. 
speaking of which, uh, wait, what do you do if a customer just wants to hang around and keep talking while you're cleaning? I've actually um, recently made Jason outright leave a house because of that. It wasn't just talking. If they want to hang around and talk, I can do that and clean at the same time. Um, but Jason had one that followed him around and was like, can you, can you clean this over here? Did you clean this? Can you dust this? And Jason hadn't even gotten to those areas yet. I need you to pull out the couch and do this and was really controlling. And he called me on his break and said, this is too much. I can't handle this. That's the second time it's happened. Um, and I told him, can you get out of there without her noticing? Can you like bring all your stuff to the car without her realizing you're packing it all up so you don't have to have a confrontation? And he said, I think I can because I'm on lunch now. So I said, pack your shit, get out. I'll deal with her later. And so about 40 minutes later, she called me, um, or she actually uh, texted me and said her husband had actually told her before Jason got over, his words were, you need to shut the hell up and let him do his thing this time uh, because you're not helping. And she uh, didn't do it. And she said, she apologized for it and said, if you can send him back and continue with uh, bi-weekly or weekly, I promise I'll stay in the other room. And I said, yeah, I'm really sorry, but we've given you two chances. I don't believe you're capable of it. And I don't, I'm not putting my employees through any of that. We've got an overload of employees at, or of houses as is, and we don't have to put up with it. Therapy app sponsorship. I've been contacted by, I think we're, we're getting ready to, I think we actually may have just broken 30 as of yesterday, 30 potential sponsorships. And I just, I've turned them all down. Has a hoarder ever given you a gift in return for cleaning the house? This happens all the time. So there actually, I'm really glad you asked this. Who asked that? That's Ryder Jordan. Um, but by the way, nice seeing you again. I, I noticed you every time I come in here. There's a thing in housekeeping where people will offer you things all the time. And the, the best thing to do is accept it because even if you don't want it, because it makes them feel good and it makes them feel like they're helping you and it makes their day. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of rude to not accept whatever, they're, whatever they're giving you, like some food, or they like to give you snacks or they'll say, Hey, I bought this thing last week, but I don't use it. You know, anybody who could, would you like it? And then I'll say, yeah, I can find it at home. Thank you. And, and so that's one thing. Hoarders will try to give you stuff because they don't want to see their stuff go into the dumpster. And so on one of the hoarding houses that I had done, I got um, basically like three car loads worth of stuff. And I didn't tell this person this because I didn't want to offend them. But a lot of the stuff I was given was covered in mouse urine and mouse poop. And so I just took them home and put them in my trash. Um, anytime somebody wants me to donate to something, I never tell anybody this. But if somebody wants me to donate something and I find that it's inappropriate to donate, what I'll do is throw it away and then I'll donate an equal amount of money to whatever charity they wanted me to do. So like, let's say somebody gives me I don't know, a box of books and the books are worth a hundred bucks, but the books are also foxed and they've got mold on them and they've got mouse poop and pee on them. I'll toss the books and then I'll find a library or a school and I'll just donate a hundred bucks in cash. And that I don't do that for them. I do that because it's to me at least makes up for the waste, even though it was ruined to begin with, it just makes me feel good. Why did you round house kick Deadpool into the wall behind you? It's that's how I roll. It's how I roll, son. Jane, hello. Congrats on two months on membership too. That's cool. You are awesome. Thank you for all your knowledge, wisdom, and all of your spin kick moves. That is how I roll, son. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to deal with a home where the owner is an animal hoarder? Yes, but fortunately they were gone already. Um, and that's one of my more popular videos was dealing with the aftermath of a pet hoarder. If I ever got, went into a house and they had legitimate pet hoarding going on, I would break my own rule about turning about not turning people in. 
If I saw animals being abused intentionally or not, I, I have to report that. It's the same thing as, you know, kids. If I see kids being abused intentionally or not, um, I've got to turn it in if there's a safety issue with anyone. Um, but fortunately, I haven't seen that. So I haven't had to turn anybody in. So how many employees do I have in the entire company? Right now, just three, not counting me. Um, I've got Jason, Adrian, and Daniel. Adrian's getting ready to, um, Wendelin, hello. Uh, Adrian's getting ready to go to college, so she's about to back out of the business. Um, Jason is getting ready to back out of the cleaning side so um, he can be my personal assistant and help me with a lot of this and to help me with um, the retail side of our business. Daniel will remain a housekeeper. I'm going to flush out his schedule. And then my middle son, Drew, who you've only seen in one video, the garage cleaning video, um, he is considering coming in as a housekeeper, which means that I just have to do some basic training on him and then he, we can flush out his. Um, that'll bring me back to three employees after Adrian leaves. So, Rachel, thank you. I, people ask me to do audio books all the time, but I don't even know how I'd get into them and I don't know that I would have the time. Sneak vape. Yeah, I'd like to go back to that house um, to do the garage in the basement, but my back right now is really messed up. What do I do with all the wolves in your client's cabinets? I wolf them up, son. I gather them up into a wolf pile. Then I pet their pretty little wolf faces. Mm -hmm. I follow up on the giraffe. Not yet. My son is autistic and he laughs at you, especially filth. He's a teenager and it's nice to have something to bond over. Yeah. You know what? It's kind of funny is that typically we can spot our own. Um, you can just see the way somebody's eyes dart and you can see the way they hold themselves. And typically we can kind of pick out other autistic people from a crowd. We just kind of gravitate toward each other. Yeah, for people who didn't know, um, whoops, sorry, um, yada, yada, yada in <laughs> had mentioned that the, collabor the collaboration house is gorgeous. For those who don't know, both Bonnie and Barbie do have their collaboration videos up. Bonnie put hers out on Saturday. Barbie had hers up about a week, week and a half ago. So if you haven't seen those, it's really worth it. They're, they're great people. Apologies to people watching this live um, after the fact. I'm After we're done with the subjects, I basically just read comments and answer them, um, answer the questions and stuff and just hang out. So it's going to be a lot of me just. <clears throat> Do I vape cannabis to help back pain? I don't. I'm allergic to THC. Um, THC gives me severe headaches and makes me super nauseous. So I can't do weed or THC vapes, um, any form of it. And then what's the other one uh, starts with a C, whatever that is, doesn't do anything to me. C CBC or CDC, or I can't remember what it is, but it doesn't do anything to me at all. CBD. Yeah. It just doesn't do anything to me. Um, uh, insider, I haven't heard from them yet. It generally takes two or three weeks for them to get their videos edited and up. Um, I will inquire about that as soon as I can. And as soon as it's up, I will post it on Facebook and, uh, the community tab on here on the channel. Um, and then I'll post it like an announcement on TikTok, and I'll just let everybody know about it. Uh, I'm really excited to see how they edit all that together because, there's a lot when they're interviewing me that they have me repeat. They'll ask me the same questions on different days. 
so that they've got multiple choices on what answer and how it's communicated, um, how they're going to use that. I watched Bonnie and Bob or Bonnie and Barbie's collaboration videos. They speak very highly of you. You are either very tall or they're both kind of on the shorter side. It's a combination of both. Barbie is five feet tall. I am six foot four. And, Bar and Bonnie is a little bit taller than Barbie. I think she's Bonnie may be five two to five four somewhere in that area. Where are my parents? They're both dead. My dad died. Um, I don't even remember 2004, somewhere along those lines. Uh, mom died in 2017. I am 49 years old. So my, my parents, if I can make it to Christmas, I will have outlived my dad. He died at age uh, 49. Where can you watch Insider? They've got their own whole social media empire, Facebook and YouTube and all that, but Uh, Alice, for my pain, I take anti-inflammatories, so um, I'll get back to this question for Alice here in just a second, but um, I'm on a, I'm on Tramadol, which is just a super low-grade um, opioid uh, that I take every day around noon, and then I do ibuprofen if I need more than that. Uh, Mac, tell us more about the Insider interview and why did it take five hours? Uh, so what they did was we would show up to the place in the morning at like 10 a.m. And before we started, they had a list of questions that were basically like, you know, what's your goal for today? How far do you think you can get? And then a, a list of um, more specific questions about how I got into it and all that. We would spend anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour doing that. But if we, I typically don't just answer the question and go, I do like I'm doing here where I go into more depth because I understand what they're going for in this video. And they didn't know that I was educated in the psychology and the abnormal psychology uh, fields. So I went into that a lot. So let's say it takes an hour, hour and a half. So by the time we're done, it's approaching lunch. So we stop, give everybody lunch. And then when we come back, we can dive into like the really deep cleaning stuff. The, then we, while we're doing lunch, they'll interview me briefly again to start talking about more in-depth type of questions. Then at the end of the day, we have a wrap up set of interview questions that go pretty quick. Um, but we had to do that each day I was there. And then the first day and the last day before we started and right after we finished, there were more in depth, like crazy amounts of questions there to kind of bookend everything. So the interview was, was pretty, um, there were a lot of questions they needed answered in order to make the video interesting. Did the husband respond to the cleaning? Um, no, I haven't heard back, but I, he may not even be home yet. He, so his whole thing is um, he was going to be gone for five total weeks. So he may still be in India at this point, but he knew that this was all happening. Is Insider a YouTube channel? They, they're everywhere. They're a massive, massive um, thing. They've got you know TV shows and they've got YouTube channels and Facebook, TikTok. They're everywhere. Um, so they're, they're a big, huge company. Can a vacuum work in a grill? Probably a shop vac, yeah. Do the owners watch my videos? Um, I'd say it's about 50-50. Most of them do. insider i hardly know her i've made that joke so many times like everybody around me is uh is ready to punch me in the face because i keep making that joke oh by the way i got to show you the fit today man back this thing up And then I've got to show you the uh, pattern on my on my pants. 
Those are Michael Kors pants, and they're awesome. I got them on sale at Macy's in uh, uh, Nashville. I don't have any shoes on today. I'm just shoeless in my office. Otherwise, I'd wear the blue Nikes because they've got this color blue in the shoes. I love this 1950s slash 40s look with the vertical stripes that go down. I think it's, uh, they're cool looking. Am I an only child? I'm not. I have a brother, a sister, and then a half-sister who I've never met. Oh, bowling shirt. I love bowling shirts. They're, they're just super cool looking. All right, guys. Um, it has been an hour and 11 minutes. I'm going to shut this down here in a sec. And then I am going to uh, do my catch up on social media real quick. And then I don't exist for the next few days as I do uh, Bowler's Gate. I want to respect all my people and spend too much time in inventory and just basically harp on the dorkiest crap that I can harp on. So thank you for being here. Um, it always means a lot to me to see you know, 1300 people hanging out and uh, watching me ramble, watch, watching me yap, getting my yap on, yapping it up. So anyway, uh, members, I'll see you this Wednesday. And uh, everybody else, I'll see you this coming weekend. And uh, for people who just show up to the live, which there aren't many of them, but I will see you next Monday. Later.